Hey everyone, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Alright, we're back with our Team 1.2 covering floods today, alright? I know it's been a while since we have touched on um, our Team 1.2, alright? The last we ended was on Aeolian, uh, your cast and Aeolian landscape. So go ahead and check those out first. I think those are even more important than these next few topics to come because they are actually quite conceptual and very hard to understand actually. Uh, if not, we're going to be moving on to part 18 of our team, uh, I mean our physical jog series on floods. Right? Floods, today we're going to be looking at hydrographs, right? in the next few parts we're going to be looking at their causes, we're going to be looking more at um, uh, what the consequences of floods, the effects of floods, okay, a, a lot more on floods that we we're going to be uh, getting to know about. Right? But in this part, we're going to be looking at hydrographs in specific, as well as how um, a hydrograph can be affected by several uh, various factors. Right, so stay tuned for this entire part. Okay, be sure to always give this video a like and subscribe if you have not already. It's, it's free and it doesn't cost you anything. So go ahead and hit that button for me first and then we will jump right in. Alright, so what's the definition of a flood hydrograph? Alright, a flood hydrograph is very simple. Okay, it's basically the river discharge that is plotted against time. Right, so think of it like uh, volume... Uh, the volume of water in a in a in a river, okay, that it can contain, um, plotted against the time, All right? So a hydrograph would vary definitely, okay, based on the amount of discharge and the amount of time that it takes before it floods, All right? So there are two main types of hydrographs that we're going to be exploring. Uh, firstly, you've got storm hydrograph as well as your annual hydrograph, right? Storm hydrograph is short run, annual hydrograph is the long run um, hydrograph. So when you look at the storm um, hydrograph, like I just said, okay, illustrates the short-term fluctuations in discharge of a river after a single episode of rainfall. Right, so it is only one episode. Um, I mean, as in this episode could have, let's say, a few days of rainfall, right? But it is only during a certain short period of time. All right, the next one is is um um in terms of storm hydrograph, okay, they can come in two different forms, in the form of river floods and flash floods. So river floods occur right when the river banks or at the river channel. Um, actually has too much water and it overflows. Okay, so it kind of like spills out onto the surrounding land. But a flash flood is different. Okay, flash flood refers to a rapid rise of water which lasts a very, very short period of time. So flash floods is very, very instantaneous, right? It's a sudden huge amount of water, uh, rainwater that comes into the river and causes a huge uh, massive flooding to actually occur. I apologize if you guys can hear some like drilling in the background. Right? I don't know why my neighbor is having fun drilling away. So yeah, okay. But anyway, so flash floods is during um, a very, very short period of time when there is intense amount of rainfall uh, such that the river channel cannot handle it at all, right? It will definitely overflow and it will cause this thing called a flash flood. Okay, on the other hand, annual hydrograph refers to the long-term seasonal changes in discharge of a river. So we're looking at the amount of discharge in the river that is um, prolonged, right? Over a long period of time, usually across the year. And it will show variability in discharge of a river during the entire year, right? So it shows at, let's say in March, um, is there a higher amount of discharge as compared to December? So this can be used to basically assess um, across the year, which are the months that tend to experience greater discharge due to, let's say, higher rainfall or certain other factors. So just take note of the differences, right? You have got two types, storm hydrograph, annual hydrograph. Storm is short run, annual is in the long run. Alright, so we move on to the components of a hydrograph. Okay, this, these are important, right? They are part of your, it is required of you to know. So firstly, we have the rising limb. I will look at a picture, or we'll look at the actual hydrograph later on. Okay, but just take note first, you have got the rising limb. So the rising limb basically reflects the rate of increase of the river discharge from the peak rainfall intensity. So right from the, uh, later on you will observe, right? Basically, when there is a peak, okay, in terms of your rainfall, that is when the rising limb will kind of like start and then we will basically measure right the rate of increase so how fast how steep is this rising limb uh due to the amount of rainfall that was present right then next you have got lag time so lag time is basically the time period between the maximum amount of rainfall and the maximum amount of discharge the crest okay basically shows the maximum amount of discharge while a recession limb is basically the opposite from a rising limb right is when the amount of discharge is actually um, decreasing okay it is basically receding just take note of these first, we'll observe it in the actual diagram later. The next one is base flow. Base flow is important. So the base flow is usually prolonged um, after a long period of time, after the flood has occurred, uh, how much base flow is actually left. 
So the amount of water in the river channel that is derived from any sort of groundwater sources, so you would see that the base flow is usually the lowest, right? Because base flow um, is usually part of the water table. It's really inherent in the river, uh, but a, a, a basically a flood okay, can actually um, cause the, the level of water to rise um, in the river, right? So the base flow is usually going to always be consistent and constant, and it will basically reflect right, how much uh, groundwater water uh, groundwater water, right? Groundwater that is um, in a river. Right, peak rainfall is basically the maximum of rainfall that was during that, that period of time. Peak discharge is the maximum amount of discharge in the river during that time. And lastly, bank flow discharge is one more, right? It is the flow at which water just fills the channel without overtopping the bank. So it's on the brink of flooding, but not quite there, right? That is when we have reached like the maximum that a river can hold, right? That is known as bank flow discharge. So if you look at a flood hydrograph or a storm hydrograph in this case, so this is like what I said is in the short run. Um, if you look over here, what happens is that you have got the rainfall which is always denoted by the bar chart. Okay, the bar chart that is over here. So this blue part over here is actually what we call the rainfall. So as you can see, the peak rainfall was from this point over here. Let me write it out here. So this is the peak rainfall. And what happens is that, like I've said, lag time is measured from the area of the peak rainfall to peak discharge. So peak discharge is actually at this point over here. Uh, this is basically the, this curve is basically uh, everything that, that is within the river, right? So the amount of time as well as um, the amount of discharge that is within the river, right? This is how it is measured, kind of like how it basically starts from when there is low rainfall over here. Um, the river is not really at a very, very high level of discharge, right? But as the intensity increases, as your rainfall increases, the river starts to build up more and more discharge, and then it reach, reaches bank full discharge, whereby after bank full discharge, it starts to flood, and it reaches its peak discharge, and then it starts to reduce through the recession limb, and so on and so forth. So the rising limb is on the left-hand side, right, when there is an increase in discharge, an increase in rainfall. And the receding limb or the recession limb is when the river is basically clearing up. The water is basically getting absorbed. It is basically uh, going back into the atmosphere. So the lag time, like I said, is in between the peak rainfall and the peak discharge. That is how you measure lag time. It is from the peak rainfall. So it's not when rainfall starts. It is when the rainfall peaks. So the highest amount of rainfall that actually occurred and when the amount of discharge in the river actually peaks as well. That is our lag time. And you can see base flow, it remains relatively consistent. It will increase a little over time due to the increase in water that is being infiltrated and percolated uh, due to the high, amount of, high, amount, high, high amounts of rainfall. Alright, so that's all the components of a uh, storm hydrograph. So the main ones that I want you to be taking note of that are important is firstly peak rainfall. Secondly would be your lag time. Third would be your peak discharge. Look at your rising limb, your recession, not recession, your receding limb, or your re your, uh, your recession limb, also e either one, right? And then you're going to be looking at your base flow, and after that, bank flow, discharge. So these are the seven main um, components of a storm hydrograph that are very, very crucial in ensuring that uh, you understand what it is, all right? So this is what's required of you. Okay, if you have any questions on this storm hydrograph, just leave it in the comment section below. I will answer them as well. Uh, if not, we're going to move on first. My bad. Alright, so we're going to look at the factors that actually affect a storm hydrograph, right? So what actually causes this rising limb to be steep? What if the rising limb is actually gentle? Okay, and likewise, what if the lag time between the peak rainfall and peak discharge, is it possible that there could be a shorter lag time or an even longer lag time? We will see. So, firstly, we're going to be looking at natural factors. Okay, we're going to be looking at external and internal factors as well as, um, sorry, we're going to be looking at na nature-related factors as well as human-related factors and look at how those two will affect the various components of a hydrograph. So, firstly, when we look at basin size, shape, and relief, firstly, when we look at size, definitely a smaller basin would mean that the amount of discharge would um, peak much faster, right? And definitely the amount of water and the... Uh, uh, rainfall that will enter the river will definitely overflow much faster as well. So hence, this means that there will be a shorter lag time, right? Because the rainfall actually reaches the main channel quicker. Meaning to say that the period of time between the peak rainfall and the peak discharge is definitely going to be much shorter, right? Because the river is definitely going to reach its peak discharge extremely quickly if the amount of rainfall is very, very intense and very, very high. So likewise, for a shape, uh, so when you look at a circular basin, so the flows of water are usually equidistant. I've gone through this in drainage basin hydro. Go check it out if you're still unsure. 
Um, basically what happens is that when you have a circular basin, the tributaries will all reach the river at around the same time. Okay, so this leads to a shorter lag time because um, a circular basin basically means that, okay, a circular basin looks something like this. Eh? Okay, it means that the tributaries, let's say this is the main river channel, they are all around and they can reach the river very, very fast. Okay, meaning to say that if the tributaries have a lot of high, um, receive a lot of rainfall from um, the intense period of rainfall, it will definitely reach its own peak discharge very quickly, which contributes to the main river channel, hence a shorter lag time. Alright, we play that if you need to rehear it to understand. Alright, next one is relief. So relief refers to when we have, let's say, a steeper or a gentler slope basin. So let's say if the river is on the slope, right, definitely more likely you would have the water reaching the river faster than your gently slowing lowland rivers. Right, we're looking at a case whereby the river channel is on um, like level ground. Okay, so we're not looking at when it's along the river. So definitely the water is going to fly, not fly. How can water fly? It's going to like rush down much faster. So as a result, this will result in a higher peak as well as a shorter lag time. Right, I think this one is very, very self-explanatory. Okay, next one is when you look at weather and climate, right? How do these actually play a role? So weather is always, remember, weather is short term. I've gone through this in my first ever video, I think, on Haley Cell. Climate is looking at long-term um, changes or fluctuations in weather patterns, right? So when you look at these two factors, okay, uh, prolonged rainfall, a single episode, right, will result when flooding most frequently occurs when the ground has become saturated. This leads to saturation overland flow, hence an increase in river discharge. So this could mean that, that, that there will be a shorter lag time, okay, possibly, or either um, relative to actually your intense storms, okay, this would definitely have a longer lag time, but it would definitely be uh, reaching its bank full and peak discharge much much faster as well, right, when there is heavy rainfall. But that being said, okay, when you compare it to intense storms, it would definitely be much slower in terms of your lag time, and your peak discharge should definitely be lower as well. Right, so when you look at intense storms, okay, multiple rainfall episodes, this is when there are heavy rains, rainfall intensity may actually be greater than infiltration capacity. This results in a rapid increase in river discharge. Okay, hence, your flash floods will occur. So over here, we can definitely observe that there is going to be much shorter lag time and a greater peak discharge. Right, so just take note of this. Okay, flash floods is going to be very, very intense. Um, it is when there are multiple rainfall episodes. So there could be multiple peak um, rainfall uh, um, in terms of your graph, okay, which means that there will be a shorter lag time, definitely, because it reaches your peak discharge much quicker as well. Alright, next is when you have vegetation cover. Alright, vegetation cover, very simple. Plant roots, right, what happens is that they can actually help to reduce true flow by taking out water from the soil, hence resulting in a gen gentler rising limb and lower peak discharge, right? Naturally, if the whole area is, let's say, very forested, there's a lot of vegetation, naturally the plants are going to not only have um, help in your infiltration capacity, right? They're going to reduce their infiltration rate. They're also going to help you to absorb some of the water, all right? It may not be at a very fast rate, but it will still be able to do some work. So as a result, this can actually help you to um, kind of like sh stretch out your rising limb and make it slightly gentler can result in a lower peak discharge as well because the amount of water is lesser as compared to, let's say, somewhere which is a barren land. One more thing is that a layer of hummus can actually help. So a layer of hummus actually aids or helps in infiltration, right? It basically reduces the surface runoff. So this can lead to a gentler rising limb and, let's say, a uh, longer lag time, right? So this is what hummus can do. So this is basically what we call uh, vegetation cover, right? When you have got either plants, a lot of forest, a lot of vegetation, or either that a layer of hummus, which can actually help in infiltration. All right, last one is when we have got urbanization. So we're looking at a human-related factor here. So water definitely cannot infiltrate surfaces made of tarmac and concrete. This one is a no-brainer, right? Because uh, it's definitely going to reduce your infiltration capacity and your infiltration ability. So this will lead in more overland flow, more surface runoff. So stormwater also accumulates downstream more quickly than in natural rivers. Right, so this can lead to higher peaks, shorter lag time, and steeper rising limbs. So human factors, which is why you always hear whenever we have a lot of flooding in cities, let's say the, the Singapore flood or what, is always because um, of concrete, your tarmac. Right, This actually prevents water from infiltrating as quickly, hence would definitely lead to not only higher peaks, but a much shorter lag time. Okay, chances are that your river channel is going to flood very, very, very quickly because the water is just basically running off into the river. It cannot be infiltrated into your soil, into your ground, uh, your rocks, and all that kind of um, thing.
things that helps to prevent the river from reaching its um, peak discharge as quickly. Alright, so that leads us to our last slide on exam requirements. I think it was quite a simple lecture actually. Um, so firstly, all you need to do is be able to explain um, the various features of a flood hydrograph and be able to draw one. Right, so in order to draw one, you just need to really just check, okay, when is your peak rainfall? Ensure that your bar chart is in place. And then from there, you can start drawing your rising limb. That should always start from a low point because of the low rainfall at first. And then it starts to rise over time and then it reaches a peak discharge. And then depending on whether it is, uh, there are other factors that are affecting, it could either have a short lag time or a longer lag time. And after that, you'll always have a recession limb as well. And then you can just draw in the base flow, which will increase slightly, but not drastically. Okay, after that, explain and discuss the various factors that play a role in affecting the various components of a flood hydrograph. So you can always compare the natural versus human factors. Likewise, um, climate usually plays a more important role because it, it first determines whether your area, your that river channel is going to have uh, very intense rainfalls or very, whether it's going to have very, very gentle um, amounts of uh, rain in, in that sense um, but nowadays increasingly most floods you realize are caused by human related factors so not to worry we'll jump more into natural and human factors in the next few videos to come so we'll look at that uh, very very soon this part really just master what a flood hydrograph is what are the different components and how um, certain factors may actually affect the flood hydrograph that's all you need to know all right so it that is all, right? That's all I have actually for this part on flood hydrograph. Stay tuned for the next few parts more on floods and then cy cyclones as well. Um, if not, if you did enjoy this video or you learned something, be sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the channel. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and it does help me out a lot. And if not, you can always leave a question in the comment section below, or you can head over to my Facebook page and my Instagram to also give me some uh, or DM me some questions if you have any. Alright, so if not, that's all I have for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye bye.